Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, you know my position on the State of the Nation address. I have always held the position that the State of the Nation is the State of the People, and that I personally do not trust the current President to paint the true picture of the State of the People. And again, this year, Honorable uh, Speaker, because of that doubt in my mind, I chose not to attend uh, the State of the Nation. Honorable Speaker, there is usually a disconnect when you listen to the President from his words, between his words and the actions of his government. And some of us have come to doubt whether really the things that he says, he actually believes. Honorable Speaker, let me start by something that would sound like uh, sweet music to the ears of somebody like me who believes in democracy. At paragraph 53 of the President's speech, Honorable Speaker, the President, and I wanted to read this verbatim, said, we are a democracy. And that democracy is a hard one, non-negotiable right, and guarantees freedom that we are proud of and must always defend. That our national democratic culture expresses itself energetically through robust discourse, boldly speaking truth to power, and holding leadership to account. It is a tradition of fearless expression and vigorous public participation. This is who we are, and there is nothing anyone can do about it. That is where I want to begin. Uh, the president could as well have been describing me. We are who we are. We believe in this democracy, we'll fight for it, and there's nothing some, anyone can do about it. The question in my mind is whether the president actually believes in the words that he's, he, he spoke. Honorable Speaker, if you go to another thing that he said that sounded like music to ears of the people who actually believe in democracy and participation of the people, he said that he had learned through the hard as well as customary ways that listening is a full-time occupation of leadership and that all questions asked by the people must be answered thoroughly and in full. The question we ask ourselves is whether he actually believes the words that came out of his mouth, that he is a listening president, number one, and that all questions asked by the people have been answered by his administration thoroughly and in full. And I want to make the quickest example here. Uh, over the past year, following the protests that we've seen in this country, there are families still asking questions of this government. They're asking questions about what happened to their loved ones. They're asking questions about people who have been missing for a long time. And even in this particular speech, the president never provided any answers. Honorable Speaker, you go to paragraph six. He says he desired to respond to the most pressing concerns that have been raised by Kenyans of all walks of life. And he went ahead and framed what in his opinion were the most pressing concerns that have been raised by Kenyans. And the, again, the question becomes, after framing those things and uh, elaborating them very clearly, did he even, in his own speech, respond to the things that he had said were the most pressing concerns uh, of Kenyans from all walks of life? Honorable Speaker, the President asked the question, number one, whether leaders understand the pain and struggles of the people. This is in paragraph seven of his speech. I do not know whether he answered that question. But for me, and the feedback that I receive from the people of Nairobi that I represent, is that we, as a leadership, a political leadership, do not understand what Kenyans are going through. And it shows, even in the sort of proposals that we put forward, in order to solve some of the issues that have been raised by the people. The second question he framed was whether policies in the education sector are working. Honorable Speaker, I also do not know whether he really answered it. But from the feedback of the people that I represent, is that education is in a crisis and that no plausible solutions are being proffered by his government. Then he asked the questions whether developments in relation to democracy, human rights, fundamental freedoms, rule of law, and transparency, uh, and accountability. This is in paragraph 8. Whether the direction of developments in relation to these issues is positive or negative. Again, Honorable Speaker, I don't know whether he answered it, because in the speech, I personally did not find an answer that is a true reflection of the situation on the ground. And some of the issues that uh, uh, Eddie has spoken here to point to a direction in uh, direct opposite uh, from the direction we should be going when it comes to issues of democracy, human rights, fundamental freedoms, the rule of law, transparency and accountability. He also asked the question whether policy and his, uh, and his administration is only in furtherance, of, is in furtherance of service delivery or just in aid of political strategy. Many people that I speak to, Honorable Speaker, believe that everything this 
uh, administration does has nothing to do with the lives of Kenyans. They are only looking for the political outcomes and especially putting the president in a position that he can vie for uh, re-election in 2027. Honorable Speaker, then, of course, as I expected, he spent a considerable amount of time looking back to the situation that he inherited when he came into power. And this is, again, something that even in my previous uh, debate on his speech last year, we said we want to encourage this administration to be forward-looking. Yes, we understand the situation that was obtaining in September of 2022, but you are halfway through your president, uh, presidency, Mr. President. You cannot still be talking about the war in Ukraine and the uh, strictures of uh, 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 supply chain uh, during or out of the war in Ukraine. We want to, you now to move forward because at this particular point in time, you cannot still be talking about 2022 and telling us that you have laid firm foundations that maybe many of us do not see. Honorable Speaker, of course there were issues with some of the figures that were being thrown around in his uh, statement. For instance, he claimed that inflation at the point he took over in September of 2022 was at 9.6%. Massaging of those numbers, whether it is uh, by a small margin or not, is aimed to achieve a certain uh, uh, end that the perspective is to be painted that he inherited things that were so bad but that he has brought them back to life. In fact, statistics from the Kenya National Bureau of Standards show that inflation was at 9.1. A difference of 0.5 is not a small difference. Honorable Speaker, he also made a very bold claim that the foreign exchange revenues uh, or, or uh, the foreign exchange reserves have risen to the highest in the last 10 years. That is just not true. If you look at the CBK report, Honorable Speaker, the highest we have had in terms of foreign reserves was 10.01 billion shillings as of 30th of May 2019, which was less than uh, five years ago. So it simply is not true that the reserves are at the highest uh, in the last 10 years. Then there is a claim that even the majority leader has tried to repeat here. He made a very clear pronouncement that the Social Health Authority will pay all October claims. In fact, he said uh, by the end of this week or during this week, Honorable Speaker, I had the majority leader saying he saw a list somewhere indicating that hospitals have been, have been paid. I can confirm here, Honorable Speaker, that that money has not been paid as we talk today. Honorable Speaker, then there was this issue that uh, Senator Halwale alluded to of uh, a standing ovation. Personally, I was embarrassed for all my colleagues who were present in the House that day because I believe personally that you are not supposed to expect praise for doing the right thing. You are not supposed to expect praise for doing the right thing. This is something that Kenyans have raised objection over for the past few months. And I want to thank my colleagues in this house, especially Senator Onyonka, who has stayed on business on this question of uh, the PPPs involving Adani. There is, they say that where there is smoke, there is fire. There were always signs, Honorable Speaker, and all these signs were brought to the attention of the public and to the attention of the administration. There was a point at which uh, Adani's uh, accounts in Switzerland were frozen, and we brought it up in committee, the Committee of Transport, when we were discussing the JKIA uh, deal. But nobody, nobody was listening to us. As late as hours before uh, the uh, president's address, the cabinet secretary for energy was appearing before the energy committee of this house. And he was insistent that even with, in light of the new information that he had gotten of the indictment in the U.S. of the Adani uh, uh, directors, that the thing would still go on. Honorable Speaker, if there is something that we have learned about the Adani uh, debacle, is that if we stick to the principles in Article 10 of the Constitution, we will never get it wrong. Some people have challenged those of us who are making noise about this particular process because they have not understood the noise we were making. We were saying the Constitution requires that if Even as as possible, and disclose when you receive this interest that these interests have been received. Finally, because I can see uh, the light is on here, Honorable Speaker, the President concluded by saying that the state of the end, it means the ability to endure suffering without breaking or in incurring permanent damage. So he knows the breaking or in incurring permanent damage. So he knows the truth. He knows the truth that he has stretched Kenyans to the end. But he knows that we will not break because we are like the proverbial donkeys. Who Senator, I give you one minute to conclude. <laughs> I thank you, Honorable Speaker. I was saying that the synonyms that I saw for resilience is a person who has ability to endure 
suffering without incurring permanent da damage or, or loss. So Honorable Speaker, he knows that Kenyans are suffering, but that somehow he has discovered that we are resilient, we can take more and more punishment without breaking. And I think this is the only thing in his speech that I agree with. I thank you, Honorable Speaker.